okay doing one today on this amp supply LA 1000 um, a sweet tube amplifier made by a ham company um, interesting to me that um, hams hate CV amplifier sweet that uses sweet tubes got nothing but hate for um, um, CVers that use um, sweet tube amplifiers however if you look on the ham sites on a site like eham and some others and look at the reviews and you know out of five stars look at the um, ham amplifiers that use us sweet tubes like this one um, I think this one got 4.5 out of five stars on the reviews and you know everybody great little amp you know nice and compact you know sweet 500 watts clean all that other stuff very interesting to me because basically the difference between this ham four tube sweet tube amplifier and something like a Palomar 300A which is two driving four um, is basically the um, Palomar has the driver tube so you can drive it with um, CB watts, 4 watts and they have an automatic key in circuit in the uh, CB amps where this one um, it's just got a jack for a foot switch or if you got a radio that can key the amp but it does not have an automatic sniffer where you know it senses drive and it keys itself up it runs on a foot switch so that's the major differences between a, a sweep to a ham amp and a CV amp and before I forget I'm gonna start hammering this curve in this is just a uh, D rating curve for a dummy load however amplifiers and pretty much anything that uh, has power has a curve similar to this and this point here and pass it are the continuous power that you can run into the amplifier or you can have put out on the amplifier and can run it continuously and that continuous line is across here so 125 watts you can run this dummy load this amplifier whatever this chart goes to continuously and you know if you see like a radio station and all that that are rated for continuous watts then this device here would be a 125 watt uh, continuous duty device right what happens in you know amateur radio and especially in CB land they're like well we don't key down continuously you know 24 7 so we're not gonna use that specification at all we're gonna use something like this 30 second which is that dot there so we're gonna use that 30 second key down and as long as we don't you know key it down for more than 30 seconds and then 30 seconds off and 30 seconds on to let the thing cool down we're gonna call this same device a 250 watt uh, device right so you can sell it conservatively and say hey I got a 125 watt amplifier or whatever and I can key it down continuously or you could take the same amplifier or device and you could say no 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 it's legitimately a 250 watt amplifier see I can key it down for 30 seconds and 250 watts and you're fine with it right um, there was an article or a blog about stoner yes Don stoner he made some um, marine amplifiers that were supposed to be spec at um, I forgot what it was but maybe 50 watts and his amplifiers only really did 20 watts but how he got around that when you first keyed the uh, amp down it was a spike like a 60 70 watt spike that you could catch on the scope so he took it to the testers and said no 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 my amps do the 70 no the 50 watts plus here watch this spike here bam keyed it down there's the spike and uh since he met the specs you know according to the specs it showed you know 70 watts even though it's just a spike uh he was just able to sell his um i don't think it was amplifiers i believe it was marine transmitters um but the boat people didn't like them 
because they were actually uh, 20 watt. But anyway, I got off subject a little bit. Another problem with CB is that they'll go beyond this. I get people all the time, you know, when I um, underrate or rate, you know, stuff down here. Let's say a Phantom 500. I say, hey, it's good 600 watt amplifier. People say, no, 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 no. Uh, Mr. Tram Doctor, you don't know what you're talking about. I can get, you know, 800 out of mine. Well, yeah, you're running it over here. Or I could get 1,000 out of mine. Yeah, yeah, you're running up here. Then I hear people, you know, they got a Phantom 500. They drive it hard. They hit it hard. Like, I'm getting 1,200, 1,500 out of mine. It's like, uh, yes, you can. You're way up here off the scale. You know, over, you know, using, over killing, over driving that amp poor amplifier and, um, the problem with CBers is so many of them run their stuff up here, just way off the ch chart and off the scale. So anyway, that's my two cents on this one. I'm gonna keep driving that one home. But back to this little amp supply um, LA1000 amp supply. Uh, basically, is a derivative from Dentron. The same guy basically made uh, Dentron's amp supply and a Maritron. Um and basically you know my thoughts on the Dentron amp supply hours are uh, very basic amps uh, they do the watts but uh, not real heavy made not real um, high quality and all that um, you know if you can look at this one it's basically a smaller transformer no parasitic suppressors you know on the tubes does have a tuned input that's what this is and it does not have 10 meters I guess you know back in the day you couldn't sell uh, a 10 meter amplifier uh, legally that did 10 meters so that open spot at the bottom of the amp there uh, are the missing components on the input side for 10 meters um, if you see that little strap I uh, soldered across, because that input is for 15 meters, I did a compromise. I put that little strap across it, so it's basically tuned for about 12 meters. So it will load for 15 meters on the input, or it will load for 10 meters on the input of that with that strap across, because there is no 10 meter components in it. It did have all the outputs um, for 10, 15, um, all the way up to 160 meters um, there. I remember that four turns. There you are, that first tap there. Um, basic amp, got a volt meter and a current meter, um, which most CB amps do not have. Got it on volts now, and you're reading about... Um, little over 800 volts if you got a volt meter um, one thing you can look at you know as far as is the amp working or what's wrong with the amp you know volt meters reading the correct volts that's a good sign your power supply is probably good nothing bad happening there and since you could key this with a foot switch I'm gonna key it down with my foot switch there um, and you can see the volts drop a little bit because basically when you key down you're grounding the tubes even though it's no drive but you're just putting the ground on the tubes and when you put that ground on it it's dropping the volts a little bit right so that's normal it should do that um, and actually this one has the current meter and right now it's not keyed down so the tubes are not grounded and you key it down again the tubes are pulling a little bit of current um, so that's what it's supposed to do that's a good sign but hard to measure that or see that if you don't have a voltmeter or a current meter on the amp um, and a lot of voltmeters like this little multimeter here if you don't have an internal one they only go to 600 volts most of modern ones nowadays high voltage stuff is uh, dying out you know in tubes and all that they're going with lower voltage and transistors uh, nowadays so you know see if you can get a meter of a thousand volts but even some sweet tube amps go more than that or you can get a high voltage probe which is divide the volts 
uh, coming into the vote meter, uh, most of the high voters pro was divided by a thousand. So, you know, that uh, 800 votes would read uh, 0.8 votes if I ran it through a high voters pro. But, you know, that's a safe way to do it. But anyway, you can get the um, high voters probe and a meter and you can read your votes and see if that's correct. And um, if it doesn't have an internal amp meter, you can hook it to an external line amp meter. And um, I've showed videos on that and see that it's pulling some amps when you key it down, right? That's normal on it. So anyway, it's tuned up for um, 10 meters. Running this um, ICOM over here, uh, one of my new toys. Um, going into a dummy load I'm not transmitting over the air uh, dummy load this is for entertainment educational and scientific uh, personal uh, scientific ooh, getting tongue-tied a little bit reasons only so not keying down going into a dummy load um, got only two watt meters showing today I'm redoing the station slowly uh, just showing the watts in on the meter on the the left that's the watts coming in from the icon down there and then on the out is the um, watts coming out the amplifier going up into the dummy load that one's on the 200 watt scale on the input and then the one on the output is on the 2000 watt scale both of them are on average so and the key are down and if you're using a foot switch you key down the amp first Ta -da! and then you key down the radio that's the proper way to key down an amplifier and going in we're dead keying a little bit under 20 watts whistling to about 60 going in and with 20 watts going in we're dead keying about 120 Swing it to about 350 on the um, average. We're going to put them both on peak. Key down the amp, then key down the radio. And going in 20 watt dead key audio. Swing about 80. And about 150 dead key. Swinging about 460. Uh, audio, audio. Um, that's the current meter with the drive. Not hitting it too hard. Uh, gonna hit it with the volt meter. Audio, audio. Not dropping too much. Um, everything working on this amp. One thing I still get a lot of people questioning on: How do you tune? an amplifier every amplifier that got a tune and a load um, tune the tune first it's actually called plate tune and some people have plate and some people have tune you know as far as the marking but it's um plate tune whether it says plate or tune you tune that one first for max if it's a ham uh, uh, amplifier and it has markings like this and if you're using it on 10 or 11 meters again educational purposes only um, that's 21 megahertz so if you're going to tune this for uh, 27 megahertz you're going to start over here where the uh, 27 or 28 would be and as you can see that dial is somewhere around there and then the load you would want to start in the middle if you don't know where it's going to tune but um usually the tune or the plate is going to be toward the least point of that capacitor but you don't know which way is the least left or right so but anyway if it's marked like this like on a ham amplifier you're going to tune it to wherever the 28 uh, would be and start with the load in the middle even though this one is tuned uh, far to the left tune your tune and load tune and load and if the amplifier has a driver tune and driver load, you tune those up. But tune your output, tune and load first, then go back and tune your driver tune. And uh, keep going back and forth until you get some max watts. Always tune for max watts. 
don't detune an amplifier because when you detune an amplifier the amplifier eats those watts the watts instead of going out they stay in the tubes and the tubes eat the watts but anyway that's going to be it for this one I think I covered everything I want to cover today uh, nice fairly clean um, fully working got all the ham bands in it um, amp supply LA 1000A not a bad little amp but uh, a thrifty made amplifier by the makers of uh, Dentron amp supply and Ameritron it's got tuned input you know like that actually it's got a very good tuned input with the two caps and the coil there so you can tune that SWR uh, fairly well down um, ran from 160 meters to 15 meter stop and again had to do a little bit of mods to get uh, 10 meters on this thing um, alright that's it for the little amp supply bye